sell out at the Hoosier Dome, and many of the fans will be cheering for the Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys make their first visit ever to the Hoosier Dome to take on the Indianapolis Colts in an interconference battle. Hello again, everyone. Along with Randy Cross, I'm Dick Stockton. The Cowboys with an impressive win over Green Bay now, even on the year of two and two. But Jimmy Johnson, the head coach of Dallas, did not mince any words. He said, look, he says, I'm in trouble if I have to psych up my team. The fact is we are better than the Indianapolis Colts, and we should beat this team today. Well, Dallas has got that old confidence, the cockiness, that the arrogance that winning brings on. But, you know, Jimmy Johnson should be a little bit worried about this game today because I think Indy plays great in this dome, and the confidence level could get over to the arrogance. It could be a problem. Colts, of course, 2-2 two and two as well, and they're going again with Jack Trudeau as their quarterback, Randy. They're going to go with Trudeau at quarterback. The most important thing for Jack Trudeau, first down. Got to get at least four yards to take the pressure off him. And their defense must force Troy Aikman and the Dallas offense to do something they haven't done since their first two losses, and that's turn the ball over and make mistakes. And Jimmy Johnson, who has a chance to go over the 500 mark for the first time ever in regular season with a victory today. Remember, he was 1-15 in his first season and Ted Marchabroda who is 62 years old returned to the Colts last year and led them to a 9 and 7 record although Marchabroda will be quick to tell you it was a deceptive 9 and 7 they won their last five games against uh, not the top quarterbacks in the league though and, and Marchabroda's got a different leadership ability and quality about him it's very much a quiet confidence he instills that confidence in his players he's not a yeller He's not a screamer. He's more a guy, if they don't perform, it's almost like being disappointed you do, didn't do something for your dad. You know, your dad used to look at you and say, wouldn't say I'm mad, wouldn't say I'm angry. He says, I'm disappointed. There is Kenneth Gann on the left and Kevin Williams on the right. The Cowboys won the toss and they'll receive. And Dean Biasucci will kick off for the Colts. Yeah, Marshall Broad is the kind of guy you want to go see uh, for dinner on Thanksgiving Day. The, the confidence and the cockiness, Dick, is going to show up early, especially in special teams. If the Cowboys aren't ready, you'll see it early. Colts and the Cowboys in a sea of blue in the crowd today and on the field as well. And a booming kick headed over to Kevin Williams, and he'll down it in the end zone for a touchback. So the Cowboys go on offense. Troy Aikman, the number one rated passer in the NFC with all the bumps and bruises. And the offensive line, outstanding work by two and a Newton Stepnoski, outstanding right side in particular with Gogan and Eric Williams. Emmett Smith and Darrell Johnston in the backs, the wide receivers, Michael Irvin and Alvin Harper and the tight end Jay Novacek. A brilliant quartet, a quintet we should say, of firepower on offense. First down on the 20-yard line. Operating out of the I formation. And a play-action pass on first down. And the pass to Darrell Johnston, the fullback. And he gets nearly nine yards on the play with Jeff Harrah, the linebacker, making the stop. Colts defensive line, 300-pounders up front with John Hand, Tony Siragusa, the number one pick last year, Steve Entman, and Skip McClendon. The strength is the linebackers, Harad, Quentin Corriott, and Dwayne Bickett. And in the secondary, Eugene Daniel, Jason Belzer, John Baylor, and Chris Grew, who did not play against the Broncos last week. Second down and one. They bring out Johnston wide to the left and hand off to Emmett Smith, and he's going to be stopped short. They have lost the yard on the play, and leading the charge was Skip McClendon, the defensive end. And these Colts are ready for the Cowboys offense from the standpoint they realize the Cowboys objective is to spread you out much like a run and shoot offense and open up the inside running game for Emmett Smith. But with guys like Saragusa and Entman in the middle, Rich Venturi, who's the defensive coordinator right there, he knows he's got a strong base in the middle. It'll be third down and two and Jim Price, who was acquired from the L.A. Rams in a trade, the second tight end is in there number 89. Only one wide receiver on third down, and Emmett Smith finds the hole, and he'll get the first down off the left side. He brings it out beyond the 30-yard line, a gain of four yards. John Hand and Dwayne Bickett on the tackle. Well, you have your two tight end look. That leads you to believe you're going to get motion, but what you get is a huge hole right through here. You talk about spreading out a defense. There's two ways to do it. You spread them out or you blow them out, and right there, Newton and Stepnowski and Tuane just blew that side of the Colt defense away. Last week, 
The wide receivers had a ball against Green Bay, and let's see if the running backs can do it this time. Eight from the throw on first down, and the pass to Michael Irvin is caught, and he is close to a first down, maybe short by a yard. Eugene Daniel, the cornerback, in on the play, and a gain of nine yards. First down for the Colts in general is going to be important, not only for their offense, but also for their defense. Because if you get this Cowboys offense eight, nine, seven yards on first down, you open up their whole playbook. You, it enables them to run on second down. It enables them to pass on third down. and enables them to go deep. Seven catches for 155 yards and a touchdown grab last week against the Packers. Second down and one, Alvin Harper is in motion. And again, they go to Emmitt Smith looking for room. He's trapped and thrown for another loss inside the 40-yard line. So the Colt defense clogging the middle. And once again, Skip McClendon, the former Cincinnati Bengal, in on the play. And if you are getting spread out, the most important thing, control the line of scrimmage. Play on their side of the ball and don't give the running back anywhere to go. You saw Steve Entman made the initial penetration and a great job by the other six guys up front in that front seven of maintaining their lanes and filling on him. A loss of three yards. So once again, the Cowboys have third down and four. Price is in again as a second tight end. Novacek in motion. Aikman has time. His pass up the middle is overthrown. Price was the intended receiver, and Randy, he was wide open in Colt territory. I don't know if the Colts bothered to read the uh, the flip card. You get the lineups and you get the, the starting lineups in the rosters. They didn't have 89 in their game plan, because watch the middle of the field. Look at Price. Absolutely wide open, and you saw Coriat and Bickett in the middle sort of look at each other with a, that wasn't relief. That was near panic before that ball went over his head. So John Jett, the rookie punter, and there is Clarence Burdan, the veteran, two-time Pro Bowl specialist, back to receive for the Colts. A low kick, and Burdan on the run at the 25-yard line. A penalty marker is down, and Burdan is stopped almost in his track after a three-yard return, making the play was Brock Marion. But there is a flag down, and we'll hear from Gordon McCarter, our referee today. I was dropped right in the area of illegal receiver downfield, illegal man, yep. I think, if, I think if you're the Colts, you decline this penalty, and you don't take it, you take the ball. You don't want to give a, a punter, even after an effort like that, you don't want to give him another shot at booming one next time. Yeah, this is not bad field position for the Colts on their 26-yard line. The ineligible downfield, number 39, kicking team. Penalty declined, first down. Derek Gaynor got down too quick. So we're going to take a break, and Ted Marcher wrote his Colts will get the ball on offense for the first time when we come back. Dear veteran Jack Trudeau, termed a wily veteran by Ted Marcher yesterday. What is a wily veteran in your book, Randy? Uh, it's not a guy that's only played eight or nine years in the league. I mean, Montana's a wily veteran. Bill Sims is a wily veteran. Uh, Jack Trudeau has been a recipient of a lot of hits. And he's got a chance to win some ball games here, but he's got a great attitude. He knows if Jeff George is completely healthy and that wrist wasn't hurt, he wouldn't be starting. Sean Dawkins, the rookie from Cal, is in there as a third wide receiver on first down from the 26. Potts, the running back, gets the ball, gets a good hold on first down. Roosevelt Potts, second round pick from Northeast Louisiana, and one to watch, picks up nine yards with Edwards and Smith making the tackle. Up front, Will Wolford, the former Buffalo Bill, with Randy Dixon at left guard. Kirk Loudermilk, the former Viking. William Schultz and Jeff Ross Moss, who came over from the Cowboys in a trade a few years ago. Anthony Johnson and Potts in the backfield. Reggie Langhorn and Jesse Hester are the wide receivers, and Kerry Cash is the tight end. Second down and one for Trudeau. Again, three wide receiver lineup for the Colts. They give it to Potts, and Potts will get the first down. He's very tough to bring down, over about 250 pounds, a gain of five with Tolbert and Edwards that time. Cowboys defense. Up front, Haley, Russell Maryland, Tony Casillas, and Tony Tolbert, who made the last tackle. The linebackers and the rookie Darren Smith on the weak side. Ken Norton in his uh, first start as a middle linebacker playing well. Brown and Everett, Woodson and Kevin Smith in the secondary. Second down and one. The formation hasn't changed yet for the Colts. Showing blitz. And here comes the blitz in the play action pass. Trudeau lays it in and it's caught. And it'll be a first down. It 
Reggie nice. Langhorn. Nice job, Dick, on what appeared to be an audible as the Dallas Cowboys show blitz. Look at Edwards sneaking up. They're blitzing from the inside. They're blitzing from the out inside, outside. Loudermilk gets a combination. Roosevelt Potts gets a great blitz pickup on his part. And Trudeau, just a very confident throw out there to Reggie Langhorn. This is the start the Colts needed. 14-yard pickup into Cowboy territory. Both wide receivers caught only two passes last week against Denver. They go to Potts up the middle. Russ Roosevelt Potts has another first down. Everett makes the tackle after a 12-yard pickup. Big Rosie, they call him. He says he's a tailback with a fullback body. Well, Butch Davis, the defensive coordinator for the Cowboys, has another name for this guy. Calls him a rolling ball of butcher knives. <laughs> nice trap block by Schultz. And you get a guy that's 200. He says he slimmed down. He goes, lost a lot of weight. I've really slimmed down in 252. Go, Rosie, you were 258. He goes, it's all in my mind. Makes a big difference. I can run. And he sure can. Here he is again off the left side. He's got about 30 yards gained already with 9.14 to go in the first quarter. A three-yard pickup and Everett, the free safety again on the tackle. And one thing this does really, Dick, for the Indianapolis Colts is it negates the speed difference between this offense and defense. Dallas has a very, very fast defense, but if somebody's blasting you in the face and running right at you, it's really hard to utilize speed. Then you're trying to use, utilize strength where the Colts have an edge on this defensive front seven. Colts are doing what the Cowboys wanted to do, spread the uh, defense and hand the ball off to Smith, only Potts is the man. And there he is again on a difficult handoff that time by Trudeau on second and seven. Fortunate the Colts did not fumble on that play where Russell Maryland was right there. Well, for the second play in a row, too, Potts is coming out of his shoes. He's the way he's running, he, he should be coming out of his shoes. And there's Big Rosie right there. and. You know, he, he is a guy, I think, that has been the missing part of this offense. This offense hasn't had a 100-yard rusher since Dickerson in 91. It, it's something that Jeff George has never had as, as, as quarterback. He's gotten beaten to death practically in these games. And now Trudeau has got the advantage of having a guy that's running. James Washington is in for the Cowboys as an extra defensive back. Third down and nine following the loss of two yards. Trudeau has some time and his pass into coverage, and it's picked off by Thomas Everett. the Cowboys blunt a Colt offensive parry there and a 17 yard return as Trudeau has thrown his fifth interception of the season. It'll be Dallas ball again in a scoreless game in Indianapolis. It'll be a first down on the 32 yard line following the interception by Thomas Everett. So each team has had the ball once we've had a turnover and the pass out on the flat is to Emmett Smith. Good spin move by Smith, and he'll get the first down. And is tackled close to midfield by Quentin Coriat. A gain of 15. Let's look at the play that gave him the ball. Watch Everett play great center field, but watch Johnson come out here going the flat. He is wide open. There is no reason for Trudeau to force this ball downfield. He's got a legitimate 9 to 10 yards. He's got a first down, but he gets greedy, and Everett makes him pay. For Everett, his 19th career interception. Cowboys now have a first down on their 47-yard line. Again, Emmett Smith going off the left side, but he is tripped up. And John Hand might have gotten a big hand on uh, Smith to prevent him from turning the corner. I don't think he got the whole hand on his foot, but he got a couple <laughs> of good, strong fingers to, to bring him down that time. It, it, it's a nice play, and I actually think Hand's got an argument that he was being held by Mark Tune who's sort of dra half dragging him down, but Hand just gets that right foot of Smith out from underneath him, and that's an AstroTurf play. I don't think on grass he, go he goes down there. One of four number one draft picks in the defensive unit for the Colts. Second down and 10 after no gain. Here's Darrell Johnston, who is ridden out of bounds by Dwayne Bickett after a pickup of six yards. So twice, Randy, we have seen Johnston, normally a blocker, go out as a receiver. You know, Johnston, everybody knows his nickname's Moose, and you get a good indication of the uh, number of Cowboy fans here as he caught that pass. And of these 60,000, I'd have to say at least easy 20,000 of these fans are Cowboys fans. There's a role player personified for the Dallas Cowboys. Johnston, who makes it all happen for Aikman in the protection department and for Emmett Smith as well. Third down and three, Jim Price once again is in as the second tight end for Dallas. 
Aikman tossed to Michael Irvin on a slam play, and he got hit hard. He's got the first down to the Colts 35-yard line. He got 11 yards on that play, and John Baylor, the strong safety, made the tackle on Irvin. On the NFL today, Terry Bradshaw talks about the values of a three-step drop and getting the ball out of the quarterback's hand. Great example. Of course, it never hurts when you have a Michael Irvin on the other end of that pass who's catching the kind of balls and having the sort of year he's having. But little passes like that are great for Irvin, but look for Harper. Those set up big plays for Alvin Harper. First down on the 35. Here's Emmett Smith. May have room off the left side. And it was Dwayne Bickett as well as John Baylor coming in to uh, stop Smith after a gain of seven yards. Well, here's how Michael Irvin tested the artificial turf prior to the game today. Here's Indianapolis's secret defense right here. What, <laughs> what happened? That's what you're, you, and the first thing to do, you take off your helmet, you look at the ground, but you're checking the turf, but you know what you're thinking? You're looking around the stadium going, how many people saw that, you think? You see, <laughs> Probably everybody. <laughs> you, you, you're going, boy, I'm glad the place wasn't full during warm-ups. <laughs> How embarrassing. Well, he's made up for it already. Second down and three on the 28-yard line. Aikman dumps it over the middle to Johnston, and the fullback has another first down close to the 15. That time, a 12-yard pickup from Aikman, Bickett, and Baylor again on the tackle. Venturi, the defensive coordinator of the Colts, says he likes to dial up his defenses and keep the offense guessing. Well, right now the Cowboys have sort of stuck a Suck a stick in the spokes of that wheel right now, and they are guessing right. He's Venturi, one of the more colorful coaches you're going to see. A guy that physically goes through every play with his defense. He twitches, he moves, he jumps. He's playing as hard as they are. Aikman is six for seven, and this pass is caught. Gene Daniel has his hands full today, covering Michael Irvin that time on 11 yard pickup. And when you talk about dialing in a defense, you're talking about making the offense guess. You make them think you're thinking pass when you're thinking run. But this time, Dallas's defense again thinks right. Indianapolis is, is stuffed up in the middle for the run, and they get single coverage on the outside. And if you can guess single coverage with Irvin and Harper, you can also guess six points. First and goal on the five-yard line. And here as Emmett Smith goes up the middle and is stopped short of the goal line by Jason Belzer. Too many tackles, you'd have to say, by the Colts secondary in this first quarter as the Colts are ready to uh, give up the first score. Well, watch the parting of the blue sea here. There is nobody. You get a lead blocker like Johnston in front of you. I mean, Johnston can contribute offensively, but, you know, his, his greatest contribution to Emmett Smith in this offense is as a lead blocker. He is the best lead blocker in the league right now. Sort of the smallest guard in the league. Second and goal on the one-yard line. With less than three and a half to play, first quarter. Wide open, Darrell Johnston, touchdown. And the Cowboys have taken the six-to-nothing lead. First touchdown catch of the year for Johnston. And he was the main man on that drive. And that's one of the drawbacks that were, were exploited by the 49ers in bringing a guy like Tom Rathman and his use into the league. You get the defense thinking lead block and you're thinking pass to the exact same guy. That opens it wide open. McDonald, the linebacker, 57, he came right at him, ran right by him. Troy Aikman was eight for nine in the game thus far, and here is Eddie Murray, who had a big day last Sunday, adds the extra point, and it's seven to nothing in favor of the Cowboys. Well, you, co you come into the game, you worry about Aikman, you worry about Emmett Smith, you worry about Harper. You worry about Novacek. You worry about this guy? You better start worrying about him. There's a recipient of Troy Aikman's touchdown toss. Darrell Johnston to give the Dallas Cowboys 7-0 lead. Johnston caught three passes on that drive, including the clincher. Now Eddie Murray will be kicking off. Clarence Verdan and Rodney Culver are back deep for the Colts. It's a returnable kick, and it'll be Verdan at the two-yard line. room on the right side and he took a tremendous hit that time by James Washington after a return of 18 yards. 
So the Dallas Cowboys with a scoring drive and they took advantage of the turnover the interception by Everett. So they capitalized on that in 432. And the key for the Colts is to keep doing what they were doing on the last drive. You're running the ball well, great. But don't get greedy like you did last time. Trudeau tried to force the ball. He had a 10-yard gain in the flat to Johnson. Be patient. A defense like Dallas is waiting for you to make those kind of mistakes. Here is Hunt. You know that he got the Cowboys' attention with his running the first time the Colts got the ball. That time, the middle linebacker, Ken Norton, held him to a one-yard pickup. We talked earlier about the forte of the Dallas defense is their speed, Dick, and what you don't want to do is start running laterally and letting them use their best weapon. If you're going to run a pot, it's got to be right in their face, right at them. You start pulling tackles and whatnot like Wolford did the last play from the backside, that gives the defense too much time to recover. Kenneth Gant, a defensive back, replaces Darren Smith, so there's an extra back and one less linebacker on second down and nine. Trudeau completes his pass to Kerry Cash, the tight end. There's a fumble, and the Cowboys may have recovered. Yes, they do. That's a killer for the Colts, and Jimmy Johnson's team will have another big opportunity. A fumble on the play by Cash, the tight end, and Dallas will get the ball again in great field position. The first error was a mental error by the quarterback. The second error, you'd have to call a physical error. There is no way to prepare as a receiver for someone sticking a helmet or a shoulder pad right on the ball. Here you see Ken Norton from his middle linebacker position playing that play well. But the one that made the play was Gant coming in from that cornerback position and sticking right on the ball. Cash, I really don't think that's not a problem. That's just something that's going to happen. Woodson recovered for the Cowboys. A first down on the 22-yard line. Here's Emmett Smith trying to test the middle, and he picks up two yards on the play. Tony Siragusa, one of the strong tackles inside, making the stop with 2.15 remaining in the first quarter. It's funny, when you look at the Dallas offense, as big as their front line is, uh, Stepnowski looks kind of there, but as their defense is, the key to the Dallas offense is speed. They got a lot of speed in their skill positions, a lot of power up front, but especially is speed. Two tight ends again, and they send Johnston in motion. The pitch goes to Emmett Smith, trying to cut inside. He does. Emmett Smith, he may get it. And Smith with a stiff arm, and did he get over? No, it's all yet. We do not have a call of a touchdown, and apparently he did not get in. Now they do. They signal touchdown. That was the longest delay before a touchdown call I've seen in quite a while. Well, the, the problem is the official was checking his body parts after getting smacked on the sideline there. He, he went down in a heap with a couple photographers and a few Colts and, and Emmett Smith, but there's an example of that speed we talked about. You go speed right, and if it's not there, you cut it back. Let's look at this from the end zone. You'll see it like Emmett does. A sweep right where things are being strung, strung. There's the hole. Look at him break. And now it's just the speed of Emmett Smith and a dash for the pylon. Watch what happens at the end, and you want, you'll see why the official wasn't too quick to signal that one. Daniel and Belzer try to keep Smith from the end zone. They failed in that attempt. Eddie Murray's kick is good, and the Cowboys again capitalize on a cold turnover, and it's 14 to nothing. There's Jay Novacek with a nice block, and here he is as Emmett Smith sneaks in. It's 14 nothing, and time for the Colts to start throwing the ball. Emmett Smith with his second touchdown of the season. He said, I'm going to catch all those guys ahead of me after missing the first two games of the year in the rushing department. Here is Murray's kick headed for Verdan. About a yard in the end zone returning for the Colts. Verdan with great speed. Penalty markers fly from upfield as Verdan is stopped by Matt Vanderbeek. Gordon McCarter, veteran referee. And that's going to set the Colts back a little more. Well, one of the few chances that the Colts had in this game, if 
they would have forced Dallas into turnovers to take an early lead. This was not in the script for Ted Marchabrota. So they've made a lot, a lot of mistakes early, and they've just got to settle down. They're going to have to throw the ball. The premium is going to be on protection. You got to challenge a Charles Haley. You got to allow for him every single play. Uh, for the Colts to win, they've got to hope the Cowboys get overconfident and kind of let down a little bit. But unfortunately for the Colts, Jimmy Johnson teams don't let down. This is the worst spot the Colts could have been in. 14 to nothing. Still have a minute 31 remaining in the first quarter. Turnovers have really killed the Colts so far, and the Cowboys have capitalized. Here's Potts. Roosevelt Potts. Boy, he has been impressive in this first quarter, so the Colts at least have the running back to take the pressure off of Trudeau, a gain of eight yards, with Darren Woodson, the strong safety on the stop. Well, they've got the running back, because as uh, as he's referred to as the rolling ball of butcher knives is off to a great start right now, because he's got knees and thighs and shoulders and everything else going. But for the Colts to be effective against the Cowboys, they've got to make them respect their passing game. They've got to make the defense think they're going to throw the ball successfully. They go to Potts on second and two. He hesitated, and he's going to be knocked back by a host of Cowboys. And there you see the Tony Tolbert with the great support. It was Thomas Everett who has already made an interception in the ball game who drove Potts back after the slight hesitation. Well, Dick, you mentioned Potts thinks he's a halfback trapped in a fullback's body, but at 252 pounds, you cannot run sideways against the Dallas defense. You will get swarmed like he just was every time. You've got to hit it quick, make your decision, and go. Cowboys are thinking pass defensively. Kenneth Gann has come in for Darren Smith at linebacker, and that's what Trudeau's going to try to do on third and three, and the pass is caught, and that'll be a Colt first down, making the reception for Indianapolis' Sean Dawkins, the number one draft pick out of Cal, and a gain of eight yards. And Dawkins is in the mold of sort of the new breed, the Harpers, the Irvins, the Rices, the, the big physical 6'3", 205 pound wide receivers. Had a great career at Cal, is just now starting to come around in Ted Marchabrota's offense. And I think we're gonna see a lot of him today, especially on those shorter, shorter patterns. And he's also a receiver that does have a certain degree of threat as far as speed. He has caught one pass and that was for a 25 yard touchdown reception. So we'll be seeing a lot of Sean Dawkins. And that is the end of the first quarter here at the Hoosier Dome with the score. The Cowboys 14 and the Colts nothing. <laughs> and the reason yeah, is the staring, Cowboys lead 14 to nothing. They're staring uh, <laughs> defeat in the face and that's staring the horse in the face. Colts with a first down on the 27 yard line. Trudeau has completed three of four for 26 yards. He's also thrown one away in the hands of Thomas Everett. Receivers, Potts gets a good hole off the right side. Roosevelt Potts may be caught from behind, but another sizzling run and a penalty marker. Two of them are down at the 37-yard line. After a 34-yard run, Darren Smith made the tackle, and Thomas Everett also in on the play. Yeah, when you're trying to tackle a 252-pound fullback, you grab anything that's available. One of the things available was a face mask. Face mask, five-yard penalty, number 27, tacked on from the end of the run. First you, don't, down. you don't go laterally, you attack. And when you make your decision, you make it quick, and that's what Potts does. And right here at the end, here it comes, face mask. That's a little extra, extra yard. Let's get a good look at it. Well, yeah, Everett so far has an interception and a face. <laughs> a five-yard penalty. Not an overt act, the officials felt, by Everett. And it'll be a first down on the Cowboy 34, the deepest penetration, obviously, so far by the Colts. And they go to Potts. They're going with a good thing. He picks up a couple. Darren Smith on the tackle. And now for an NFL update on the Philadelphia-Chicago game, let's check in with Jim Nance in New York. Jim? All right, Dick. There are some long faces in Philadelphia, too. Bubby Brister has turned it over twice. Harbaugh for the Bears to number one pick Curtis Conway, his first NFL touchdown. Bears lead 10-0 starting the second. Back to Dick and Randy. A shock in some circles, Randy. Well, the shock really is mainly in Chicago. I'm sure a lot of Bear fans don't expect that kind of performance out of Harbaugh after the way he's done so far this year. Second down and eight. Trudeau on the draw play. Potts 
And Darren Smith trying to hang on for dear life. He might have picked up a yard on the play. So far, Potts has carried 11 times for about 71 yards. I think that's exactly what it is. So a great first half for the rookie Roosevelt Potts. Well, the problem for the Colts has not been their execution on first down so far offensively. Obviously, defensively, they had a problem with the Cowboys' offense. But offensively, they're gaining the yards they need on first down. The problem's been taking advantage after that on their second and third and their execution with their quarterback taking the sure thing. Fox goes out, and Anthony Johnson, who's their leading rusher and receiver coming into the game, going out as a receiver here, and the pass up the middle and wide open is Johnson. Darren Woodson makes the tackle, and Anthony Johnson, who was uh, born in Indianapolis and was a second-round draft pick from Notre Dame four years ago with a gain of 10 yards, and the Colts are moving the ball. And that's the kind of play. You saw it set up on the interception where Johnson was free. As you see, Johnson, 23, circles out of the backfield. You don't force it. You take the sure thing, and you let the guy with the ball make something happen once he catches it. First down on the 21-yard line. Anthony Johnson, a play fake, and Trudeau's pass is intercepted again and the third turnover of the first half, and that was Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith, who has intercepted three passes now for the Cowboys this year, and the Colts are self-destructing with three turnovers in this first half. And we may see another QB before this one's history. It's been sharp. The Cowboys have capitalized on turnovers, and uh, the three Dallas takeaways equals their whole season total so far. And on that last play, you know, when you think about defense, you want to clear out with the outside receiver, Dawkins. You want to bring Langhorn underneath. One of the things you've got to live with if you play a rookie are rookie mistakes. Dawson, Dawson, Dawkins stopped in the middle of his route, and that's why the interception was made. Whatever. <laughs> so it's a first down for the Cowboys, and Troy Aikman throwing, and he completes it to Michael Irvin. Nearly regained his footing and got a few more out to the 32-yard line and a gain of 19 yards for Michael Irvin. Two of the turnovers, by the way, committed by the Colts have gotten inside the Dallas 30-yard line, so it's not like they haven't had opportunities to catch in against the Cowboys. Well, coming into that play, Dallas was averaging four and a half yards on first down. Now they knock another 19 on top of that. Indianapolis is doing almost what Green Bay did. They're trying to stop the run, and they're challenging the receivers. That can be deadly with Torrey Aikman at quarterback. First down on the 32-yard line, and the pitch is to Emmett Smith. Nowhere to go. Great ad living by Emmett Smith as he gets seven yards on the play. Skip McClendon brings him down. 11.35 remaining in the first half, 14-0 in favor of the Cowboys, and we have an injured Colt, Steve Empman, who is uh, really the man who's going to be manning the defensive tackle spot of the future, the number one draft pick in last year's draft from the University of Washington, and he is shaken up. And with that injury, we'll take a timeout, return to the Hoosier Dome after this. Let's take a look at Empman right here. We're not going to dwell on this. But here's Entman on the last play. And this doesn't need description. Just watch what happens. And this is not good news with that right leg right there folding underneath Entman as he was putting all the pressure on to cut back. And they've got a card on the field. And they're going to take the leader of Entman's army, the more fanatical fans, as they refer to him here in Indianapolis, off the field. And their general is hurting. Yeah, there's not much to cheer about here with uh, Steve Empman, who is uh, the cornerstone of the future of a very impressive defensive line for the Indianapolis Colts. As we said, all of them uh, weigh 300 or more pounds, but Empman is definitely the key to that line. And the point must be made here. It was the left knee of Steve Empman he hurt, hurt last year. That is his right leg he's injured this year. His place will be taken on the defensive line by Sam Clancy, 11-year veteran from the University of Pittsburgh. There is Clancy, who, by the way, was a basketball star as well as football at the University of Pittsburgh, played for Bobby Knight in the Pan American Games back in 1979. 
But it's uh, hard to put Clancy in Edmonds a category. Emmett Smith running off the left side, and uh, he may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Jeff Harad, who had been injured himself in recent weeks, making the tackle. And one of the dangerous things about these Dallas Cowboys is how patient they, how patient they and their offensive coordinator Norv Turner can be. They'll take the little gain. They'll take the no gains. They know they have their weapons. This right now is the best offense in the NFL. I know some teams would would argue that gee, we have talent here, we have talent there. The whole package is here in Dallas. Kevin Williams is in his uh, third wide receiver. First time the Cowboys have gone this way. Third and two. And Aikman has to dump it off, and it's Alvin Harper underneath. And it's apparently, it's going to be an incompleted pass. I'm not sure why the officials did not blow their whistles earlier and let the players go after it and maybe risk injury. It was clearly not caught. Tony Stargell was defending on the play. And uh, we may, in fact, uh, have someone shaken up after all. The starting cornerback, Chris Good who, by the way, did not play last week because of an ankle injury against the Denver Broncos. So Good is hurt. But uh, that was a long uh, time before we heard uh, the whistle and the signal of an incomplete pass. I guess you could say it's a sound or whatnot, but if you're thinking fumble and you're full speed, full speed defense, you're trying to get that ball. Yeah, he ran uh, smack into Derek Gaynor, who came in as a uh, blocking uh, back for Troy Aikman. Let's see if it was closer than we figured up here in the booth, as far as the completion is concerned. Well, it's being bobbled from the very beginning. Watch right here. The ball gets in. It's out, 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 out. Never had it. You know, the, the whistle's blowing here. A little bit of continuation on the part of Mr. Stargell bringing things down, but I mean, I, I, there's no excuse for the players, A, not stopping, and B, the officials not taking a, a more assertive role in making sure the play does stop. Stargell had to stay with him because um, Harper could have eventually gotten control of the ball. Harper, uh, or Stargell, played that perfectly. So here's Ted Marchabroda already with a furrowed brow after losing his top tackle, Steve Entman. And another cold injury on top of that. Second really tough injury for the Colts in this game, taking all the necessary precautions with the stretcher out there. And any injury of any kind affects players, and especially when a player is down for a significant length of time. Let's take one more look and, and see what it was that happened as he was going for control of the ball. Good has his head down, and as the collision happens right there, Taking that hit on the on the crown of the helmet, that's much as the league has has fined Chuck Cecil uh, for using the crown of the helmet, whether you agree or not. That is specifically the kind of contact that that Derek Gaynor made, you know, with Goode's top of his head that that the league is trying to at all costs uh, prevent. Well, if you wanted to uh, have any occurrences that would silence a, a crowd of 61,000 a sellout here, it would be uh, two rapid injuries to players Steve Empman who was was taken off on a cart and now uh, Chris Goode who suffered the ankle injury last week and uh, still working on him he has not been put on the stretcher as of uh, late Goode uh, from Alabama in his seventh season was a 10th round draft pick And this crowd is in utter silence here. Well, Leslie Visser is our uh, reporter on site. And uh, we're going to try to get you uh, an update on both of the cold injuries. Just tuning in, the Cowboys lead the Colts 14 to nothing. We have 10:39 remaining in the second quarter. As Cowboys took advantage of two Indianapolis turnovers to get scores in the first quarter, and then the Colts turned it over again. And when we do return to action, it'll be fourth down. The Cowboys will be punting. 
So Chris Good is Tony Siragusa, and uh, we echo his sentiments. So two members of the Colt defensive unit have been wheeled off here in the second quarter. It'll be fourth down. And John Jett will be punting, and Clarence Verdan will be back deep for the Colts. There is Verdan, former Washington Redskin. For that in the USFL. Booming kick by Jett sends Verdan backpedaling inside his five the ball he's in trouble trying to get out of his own end zone and Bill Bates knocked him out of bounds and Verdan made a lot out of very little as he returned at 17 yards heady play by Verdan well coming up after our game the American League Championship Series game five in Toronto the White Sox and the Blue Jays and the starting pitchers from game one will be matched up again Jack McDowell against Juan Guzman and tonight the National League Series resumes at Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium as the Phillies take on the Braves. That game begins at 8 o'clock. It'll be Danny Jackson, the left-hander, and John Smoltz for the Braves. Tony Casillas, who was out for a play or two, now back in at left tackle defensively for the Cowboys. First 10-10 at the 16 for Jack Trudeau. Trudeau's got a lot of time, and he's going to go deep for Dawkins downfield. And he's got it. And a penalty marker down. Sean Dawkins still on his feet. And is chased out of bounds by James Washington in the big play of the game for either team. 69 yards. A lot of contact, a lot of pushing downfield as that ball was in the air. Larry Brown was downfield with Dawkins, but there was shoving and the flag thrown. And it's going to be against the Cowboys, apparently. They're motioning... Bring the ball to about the 16. Pass interference, number 24, defense. Penalty is declined. Pass is complete. First down. Well, that takes a little bit of the sting off Dawkins' earlier mistake, but the thing to watch here, watch the contact down the field. Remember, both players have a right to the ball, but what the offensive player's right is not to be pump, bumped in and pushed and distracted too much physically as that ball is in the air. Remember, Sean Dawkins has caught a 25-yard touchdown pass for his only reception of the year coming into this game. And actually, if that ball had less air under it, if it was thrown further, Dawkins was at least two or three yards behind Brown, would have been a touchdown. So a first down on the 16-yard line. Cray play fake for Trudeau. With one man on his shoe, he throws the pass away. Casillas had a hold on him, and Roosevelt Potts was the receiver, and wisely, Trudeau threw the ball away before going down himself. And that's one thing Trudeau cannot afford to do, I think, against this Dallas rush with guys like Casillas and, and Haley and company coming after him is hold on to the ball too long. He'll, he'll get that result almost every time of one of these defenders will be crawling and scratching and clawing at his legs. The Colts have turned the ball over in every possession they've had coming into this one. Three turnovers in the game. Two of them have been inside the Cowboy 30. So here's second and 10 on the 16. Again, Trudeau on the draw play to Potts. Potts getting inside the 10-yard line. And James Washington rides him down after a pickup of seven yards. Well, at least the Colts are in field goal range, but they're looking for more on this drive. This is a running back that can make defensive backs look like hitchhikers getting a ride. Watch the defenders swarm, but I tell you what, there's three guys in white, and there's one guy in blue, and all four are going forward. This is one powerful back. And James Washington and Thomas Everett and, and company back there, if you hit this guy, you better square up and, and pray for help. He gained 141 coming into this game, already has 78 in this game alone. Third down and three. Out of the shotgun is Trudeau. And the pass up the middle is caught at the five-yard line. And that was the running back, Anthony Johnson. James Washington on the hit, a gain of five. It'll be fourth down and two. And the crowd urging the Colts to go for the touchdown. And that's what Mark Chabrota is going to do here, at least to this point. Or they have a first down. 
It is a first down, first and goal on the three. So no big decision here. Now here's where the execution comes into play for Trudeau. They've been very composed. They've been very cool. If you throw the ball in this situation, don't throw it in a crowd in the middle. Use that big fullback. Charles Arbuckle, the second tight end. And the give inside is to Rodney Culver for a couple. It'll be second and goal as we wind down to eight minutes remaining in the first half. You got to wonder at times when you got a, a fullback running that good, why you don't put him at halfback and let him blast it in there for those tough yards. I mean, use the 250-pound guy to, to try to, to take those defensive linemen on. Potts has been going up the middle, getting three yards just by getting the handoff at the line. And now they went a different way. Well, Potts is back in there. It'll be second and goal. Colts with 11 possessions have scored nine times, but only two of them have been touchdowns. And with the clock running down, Trudeau calls timeout. So that'll be the first timeout called by the Colts here in the first half. And uh, a wise one when you're down 14 nothing. Oh, yeah. That's decision time when you get down there. It's the quarterback's call, and it's a smart call by, by Trudeau. When you lose your clock like that, that things are getting down, and it's where you've seen the most effect of the 40-second clock has been down in the red zone where the, the decisions become more critical, the audible, uh, audibles become more critical, and when you have a smart quarterback, he's willing to make the decision to take the timeout not to hurt you. The way the Colts have been running the ball, Ted Marchabroda and the, all the coaches there on offense have got to be thinking, hey, if they respect our run and they respect Roosevelt Potts, not a bad time for a play action if you fake one up top and get the big guy leaping over the, over the top and hit a, hit a tight end or a receiver on a quick little fade. The Giants, the Bears, and the Vikings all winning by shutouts right now, 5-0. Well, that score looked like uh, baseball finally came to Tampa Bay and the Twins are up 5-0. <laughs> well, one of these days it will, Randy, I think. Well, the Colts started on their 16-yard line and the big play, the 68-yard pass to Sean Dawkins. So you, you mentioned uh, they're looking for pots or Culver in the run, that may be a good time to throw the ball. In any event, the Indianapolis Colts have had the ball in the game three times in Cowboy territory, and it's still not the end of the goal line. Second and goal now at the three. And I think Pot started a little early. There's the pass caught for the touchdown and maybe called back to Kerry Cash. That's an easy one, Dick. That was procedure that was movement that was offsides that was dumb <laughs> last one <laughs> will be repeated in the film room this week that last explanation this is where the teams that don't win commit the penalties illegal motion setback and the offense moving forward before the snap also a second man was moving they did not reset they did a lot of penalty repeat the down they did a lot of things there well, I haven't seen a setback. I believe it was Duffy Waldorf had the last set. <laughs> there he is, 42 pots, moving forward. Not only can you not move, you cannot go towards the line of scrimmage as the ball is snapped. Be an interesting rule change, though, to be talked about. Second and eight, and there is a big difference between second and three and eight besides just five yards when you're that close. It's incomplete. Dawkins was defended by Kevin Smith. There's a flag down. Penalty marker is down. That's the play when you have a six foot four wide receiver working against five nine, five ten defensive backs. They haven't used him much coming into this game, but Sean Dawkins certainly has made an impact on the Cole offense, and they were surprised that he lasted to 16th in that first round. The pass is incomplete and there is no infraction on the play. Let's take another look at this play. Good floating pass by Trudeau. Thrown right at the back pylon. Look at that. Nice throw. One hand. He actually has possession but does not have possession inbounds. And that flag came from the back judge. Kevin Smith Made a perfect play on uh, Dawkins. There's not enough room for him. Colts just ran out of football field. 
So it'll be third and goal, the ball at the eight-yard line. They have three wide receivers. Dawkins lines up to the right. Here is Trudeau getting some pressure. He's got pots open, but he drills it, and the pass is knocked down. It was intended for Jesse Hester, and Larry Brown knocked the ball down, and there's another penalty marker. Oh, were they, were they, the kid, were they kidding this time, Dick, or do you think they meant it? And that'll go against the Colts, holding, and a first down. Against the uh, Cowboys, that is. Defensive holding against Dallas. And how happy is that guy about that? Jimmy Johnson knows little mistakes can add up. They're up 14-0, but 14-7 here at this point gives a young team momentum. Holding, number 26 defense, half the distance, automatic first down. That was Kevin Smith who made the fine defense on Dawkins, now guilty for the hold. That moves Indianapolis back into the territory where they can start thinking about banging a run and taking advantage of the play action possibilities. They scored on a play to carry cash where they faked the run up front, but Potts was moving. So instead of having second and third and goal at the three, now they have a first and goal at the four yard line. Arbuckle, the second tight end, is going in there for Indianapolis. Roper and Robert Jones in. Here is the give to Culver, and he'll lose it back to the 10 yard line. Keep in mind that the Colts have turned the ball over three times, twice inside the Dallas 30. This was a loss of six yards with Russell Maryland in on the play, and he's slowly getting up. You don't. I repeat, you do not try to go laterally against the Dallas Cowboys speed defense. Go straight ahead. I don't care how fast Culver might be or thinks he is, you don't get laterally on this team. Jimmy Jones and not Maryland slow getting up. The Colts have scored only one touchdown in the first half this season and it's a struggle right here it'll be second and goal back to the 10 puts them back in the same situation they're in the shotgun they've got to throw it's a nickel d for the cowboys out of the shotgun here they come on trudeau his pass up the middle overthrown it was intended for the tight end curry cash but now it'll be third and goal at the 10. it was a seven foot pass to a six foot four wide receiver who didn't jump. Who unfortunately was a tight end and didn't have quite the air time or the balance at that point to catch it. He had the receiver open. See the nearest defender here to Cash. He is trailing Cash. But there's no way with the ball that high they can lob that ball in there. Jeff Code is in up front. Washington and Bates in the secondary. Trudeau gives ground and throws the ball away. He was chased up front by Russell Maryland and Jimmy Jones. And the Colts fans are booing their offense. It is fourth down. And I think booing rightfully so. It's about a 50-50 mix. You got booing and you have cheering for the Cowboy fans here on hand. But that, that was a very inadequate, poor to terrible sequence of offensive plays by the Colts in what would have been a great opportunity to score a touchdown. Iasucci, who is connected on six field goals in a row, will try this from 28 yards. Ron Stark will be holding. And Iasucci makes it seven in a row, but it's a, a bittersweet end of a drive for the Colts, who should have had seven. So it's Cowboys 14, Colts 3, 6.33 on the clock. Give me a chance. Iasucci will kick off and back deep. For the Cowboys will be Kevin Williams and Kenneth Gant. Williams is on the right, Gant on the left. Colts must be wondering if it weren't for the turnovers and the stall drives. Maybe a lot closer. Biasucci. End over end kick and it'll be Williams at the goal line. And he is tackled from behind by Tony Stargell. Well, next week on CBS, a doubleheader weekend begins with the NFL today at 12.30. The Eagles will face the Giants in an NFC East battle. New Orleans will travel to Pittsburgh in an interconference game. And the late game, it'll be the 49ers and the Cowboys. And the last time these teams met 
were for the NFC Championship at Candlestick Park last January. And Troy Aikman and this Dallas team has an interesting perspective now. I think going into that championship game last year against the 49ers, there was a certain amount of doubt. Now that they've beaten the 49ers, there is no fear and there is no doubt that they can take on a team from San Francisco. First down. Dumped up the middle to Novacek. Good touch pass by Aikman, and Novacek brings it out to the 35. A gain of 14 and a first down. Ashley Ambrose replacing Chris Goode at cornerback. Goode, of course, was carried off the field. Ambrose played for Good last week in Denver. Look at the Giants and the Redskins. I don't know how, how many legs uh, Griffin went in there playing on about a leg and a half, but uh, it's to be their fourth straight loss uh, for a Washington. Tough city for Reggie Pettibone to get off to that kind of a start. Pitches to Emmett Smith trying to reverse his way and is stopped for a loss. Quentin Coryat. We talked about Entman, the number one pick. Coryat was taken on the first round as well out of Texas. A&M and only 11 career games, so a lot of people on the Colts feel he's still a rookie. Well, you talk about it's only his, what, 11th, 12th game as an NFL player. It's, he's a guy, though, much like great linebackers, like a Singletary or somebody like that. Not only does he have a good motor, he's got a great battery, a good everything. This guy is twitching, moving, jumping before the ball is even snapped. Great football instincts. He just has to get used to playing at this level. Second down and 10. Price, the second tight end, goes in motion. Aikman's pass is caught by Michael Irvin, and he is downed at midfield, actually in the Colt territory, a pickup of 16 and a first down. It was John Baylor making the stop on Irvin. He's been involved on several big pass receptions. Another good example of the patience of the Dallas offense. First play, Emmett Smith is stopped. What do you do? You say, okay, fine. You come back the next play, and you go to Novacek. Then you go to Irvin. These are the kind of weapons and the kind of plays that Dallas can make to frustrate a defensive plan. 12 straight games that Irvin has caught five passes or more. And a first down, Aikman fires up the middle to Irvin. And he couldn't hold on to it. It might have been the first deflected by Ambrose. Irvin stayed with it, but he juggled it and couldn't hold on. That was a beautiful pass thrown by Troy Aikman. We saw Jack Trudeau throw a ball to Kerry Cash. It was slightly overthrown into a tight defensive situation. Here is a perfect pass floated in into a tight situation. Look at that. Right where Irvin had a chance to get the hands on it and catch it. Heck, he had two or three chances to catch it. Ambrose did a good job by getting that hand up at least. And that's the difference that Troy Aikman can make. A great quarterback can make great defense look just not good enough. Second down and 10 on the Colts 49. Here is Emmett Smith getting ground. Slowed up. Smith has not been able to get untracked against the Colts defense. A loss of two yards. Tony Siragusa made the tackle. And the main difference being, Dick, is Colts are getting good penetration and they're maintaining their lanes backside where Emmett Smith had the big run for the touchdown on a pitch back where he cut the ball all the way back. There is nowhere for Emmett Smith to go backside, front side, the middle. He's being thwarted. Emmett Smith has gained 40 yards so far on 12 carries. Third down and long. Third and 12 for the Cowboys back in their own territory. Aikman has time and the sideline pattern. Alvin Harper. Might have been a connection mix-up with Aikman. The crowd cheering again as the Colts defense holds the Cowboys when they got to midfield. So John Jett will be in to kick. This will be his third punt. And back is Clarence Burdane. And this is where a punter can do an awful lot for the defense. This is a situation where you want to get a ball out into the corners or make the ball bite and die inside the 10 yard lines to put Jack Trudeau in the offense back. Another booming high kick and a fair catch called for by Verdan at the 10 yard line. 51 yard punt. Second longest of the day by John Jett. So the Colts now will start from their 10 yard line with 329 remaining in the half and they have only two timeouts remaining. Plenty of time for Jack Trudeau to get something out of this drive here for the Colts. The key is going to be 
how will he react to the Dallas defense? Will he take what the Dallas defense will give him? Dallas will give him yards with the passing game. See, Marcia Broder discussing things with Mikowski, who's today's second team quarterback, and Jeff George, who is the third emergency quarterback, discussing what is Jack going to do? Where are his opportunities going to come? First down at the 10-yard line, three wide receivers play fake for Trudeau inside his five, and his pass is incomplete. He had a wide-open Reggie Langhorn, and that'll bring up second down. By the way, we are waiting for the Colts organization to clear the way so we can get information on the two injuries suffered by their defensive players, Steve Entman, the tackle, and Chris Good, who were both wheeled off the field. And as soon as we find out, we'll relay it to you. Leslie Bisser is on hand, and she is checking it out. Second down and 10. You would not know by looking at the total yardage that the Cowboys are up 14 to 3. And that's the story. And this time to give us the box bursting up the middle. What a brilliant power run up the middle by Roosevelt Potts. The second round draft pick this year, Kenneth Gant, finally brings him down after a 19-yard game. Nothing real complicated about this. You put your big guys on their big guys, and you let Big Rosie just roll it and give a few e-ticket rides to some defensive backs. You had Smith, you had Gant, they all got a ride. Passes to Jesse Hester underneath and out of bounds to stop the clock with 2.47 remaining in the half. A gain of six, that was Larry Brown defending. And a good example, Dick, of taking what the defense is going to give you. This far out with this much field to defend before you're to the end zone, the defense will give you those sorts of passes. They have to be patient. The cold offense is patient, takes those 10-yard gains, takes the 8-yard gains, hope they break a tackle, but don't throw the ball inside in the middle of the field where interceptions are waiting to happen. Clock running 233, second down and four on the Colt 35. They go to Potts, their meal ticket, and he's got the first down. You know, it's amazing. We go back to when the Colts had the ball inside and they gave it to Culver. I would have pounded into Potts all the way and they would have scored the touchdown even from as far out as 10 yards. Three, four, five <laughs> yards doesn't seem to be a big deal. He's got a big physical offensive line with a, a very crafty, skilled center and Kirk Loudermilk in the middle who's making things happen. And Roosevelt Potts is starting to remind one of a Roosevelt Leaks <laughs> right. out of Texas, the way he's running. First 100-yard game in his career. It's the two-minute warning in Indy. Now with 102 yards is the first Baltimore, or first Colt, <laughs> I should say, uh, Indianapolis Colt to rush for 100 yards in a game since Eric Dickerson against the Browns in uh, 1991 in December. Well, you made the point that if the Colts hadn't made all those turnovers, they wouldn't be down 14 to three. And if they hadn't moved, they'd still be in Baltimore. I was going to say, you know, they'd still be in. You know, the interesting thing with Jesse Hester caught a pass. Now, 51 consecutive games that he's caught a pass. When you think of all the great receivers they've had, Barry or Willie Richardson, that Jesse Hester has the longest streak in the franchise. First and 10 on the 40-yard line. Colts have two timeouts remaining. Out of the shotgun. Is Trudeau and his pass is caught by Hester and he goes out of bounds to stop the clock. Smith defending after a gain of seven. 155 on the clock now. And I really like the selection so far for the Colts. The question is, can they stay patient? And when they move the ball down the field, can they stay patient and can they execute in the red zone when they get close to the Dallas goal line? Colts turned the ball over three times on their first three possessions of the game and then had to settle for a field goal when they were knocking on the door the fourth time. Second down and three on the 47 yard line again out of the shotgun and an inside handoff to Johnson and he's going to be thrown for the loss by Jim Jeffcoat. Loss of four yards on the play. And the hurry-up offense for the Colts. They still have those two timeouts. That was a great job by Jeff Coat. You, know, you always hear the term spy. The one spy defensive lineman. Great job of spying by Jeff Coat and making that tackle on that draw. That's his job. Third down and seven. Three wide receivers. Trudeau goes underneath to Johnson. And he's going to be knocked out of bounds before he gets to the first down marker. A gain of five. And right now, to give you an update on the injuries to the Colts, let's go down to Leslie Visser. Leslie? 
Dick, an update on the two injuries. As for Steve Entman, his is serious. He has torn the anterior cruciate ligament on his right knee. He also tore the medial lateral and has a patella tendon injury. As for Chris Good, he has a neck sprain. That's all we know about him at the moment. I spoke with Steve's parents, Jim and Darla Entman. They said he was in a lot of pain and he was very discouraged because he worked so hard to come back from the injury on his left leg. Dick? Thank you, Leslie. Good work, and I don't know how you meant, got to mention all of those descriptions. Ron Stark punting for the first time, and it's Williams is going to let it uh, drop. Kevin Williams and the Colts will try to keep it in play. They can't. And a 51-yard kick when all is said and done by one of the best in the league, Ron Stark. And the Cowboys will begin from the 20-yard line with 1-12 remaining. I want to remind you, coming up at halftime, Jim Nance and Terry Bradshaw with scores and highlights. A preview of the uh, game that's following this one. The White Sox and the Blue Jays in game five of the American League Championship Series, which is all even at two games apiece. And the home field advantage hasn't exactly worked no. into that series so far. No. Will uh, a home team finally win in this series? The White Sox lost to the Blue Jays at Comiskey Park, and Toronto has not been able to win in two games at Sky Dome. Well, if you're Rich Venturi and the defense of the, of the Indianapolis Colts right here, you've got to be thinking tackling and contain. You can't let the Cowboys get a big play out of a short pass. Kevin Williams, the third wide out, and Aikman ducks underneath, and he's going to run, being chased, and goes out of bounds. It was Jeff Harrod, the last of the triumvirate of Colts to chase him out of bounds after Troy picked up eight yards. Harad's an interesting story. Not only interesting, he's amazing. A guy that dislocated his ankle in August. They said 8, 10, 12 weeks before he comes back. What's he do? Comes back a month after he dislocates his ankle. It's just, it's incredible. Having had something like that as an injury, I, I just can't believe this guy is able to do this. And at the level, he is doing it. You saw the speedy he showed there. Been the chief tackler for the Colts the last four years. Second down and two on the Cowboy 28. Aikman dumps it off this time to Gaynor out of the backfield. He'll get the first down. The clock continues to run. Harad on the tackle after another gain of eight. And now we'll have a timeout called by the Dallas Cowboys. That's their first timeout of this first half. Troy Aikman in his series of injuries, he does have separated cartilage in those ribs. And wow. He's not wearing that harness on the left shoulder. He's got separated ribs. That's got to hurt. First down on the 31 of Dallas. Both were stymied last time. Had to settle for a field goal. Here's a slam pass to Sean Dawkins. And they wrap him up inside the 25. Dixon Edwards and Larry Brown. Gain of eight. Clock continues to run. A hurry up offense. Colts still have two timeouts remaining. Second down and two. Here's where the composure and patience comes into play. Udo drills it, and it's intercepted by Thomas Everett, his second of the ball game. I think you got to get out the hook. You got to let another quarterback make some other decisions because Jack Trudeau is throwing this ball right into some coverages. The ball has no business being thrown over the middle of the field into those kinds of zone coverages in these situations. That's the fourth turnover by the Colts and the second interception thrown by Trudeau. Now watch the coverage back behind the 10 yard line here. As this ball is winged in there, you've got one defender in the back. You've got a free safety playing deep middle field. Ever gets his second interception. And sure, Trudeau gets smacked a little bit by Russell Maryland, but that decision was not caused by pressure. That was just a poor decision. So once again, the Colts miss an opportunity, and uh, Jimmy Johnson said, we are a better team, but the Colts are more self-destructing than anything else. Three interceptions thrown by Trudeau in the first half, four turnovers, as the clock winds down, ending the first half, and we wonder whether Mark Chabrota will go to it a different quarterback. That's the end of the first half here at the Hoosier Dome with the score, the Cowboys 14, the Colts 3. The Ag Dealer, we are driving excitement. American Airlines, something special in the air. Heineken, just being the best is enough.
and by Bigfoot Pizza from Pizza Hut, the biggest pizza you can get delivered. Back at the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis at halftime, the Cowboys leading the Colts 14 to three, although the Colts could have gotten a lot more were it not for turnovers. Big story, of course, for their defense was the very severe injury, the knee injury to Steve Empton in three different places, and uh, Chris Goode also out with a neck injury today. That, that, has, that has really hurt Indianapolis defensively, though defensively they played well. The big problems offensively. They're, they're executing very well. They're, they're getting yards, but then they're getting some very poor decisions out of their quarterback position. You know, Dick, we talked about it earlier. I, I think you've got to go to a Don Mikowski at this, at this point of the game. Trudeau's confidence has got to be shaken. You've got to give a little jolt to that offense. Mikowski, though, is wearing the uh, baseball cap. And uh, it looks as if Trudeau is going to start out because uh, Trudeau has the helmet on and Mikowski has the baseball cap on. And so uh, even though I didn't play the game, I would probably be able to figure that uh, Mikowski's not going to go out there to start the second half. Either that or he's a pretty tough guy. <laughs> Murray will kick off. Verdan and Culver back deep for the Colts. But Ted Marchabroda probably said one more chance, although he's thrown three interceptions. Only two of them really were Trudeau's fault. The other one was the receiver not turned around. The problem is, Dick, one more chance could be the last chance for the Colts. There's the kick, and it's headed for Verdan, who is at the three-yard line to bring it back. He's got great speed. Verdan pushed out of bounds and a return up to the 25-yard line. Everett on the play. So Trudeau, who completed 10 of 18 for 138 yards in the first half. Well, he was harassed a bit by the Dallas defense, but the, the true story of his first half is not so much how many times he was hurried, hit the blitzes against him. The problems with Trudeau was when he went to the middle of the field, the decisions he made were not the proper decisions, and they were decisions that cost the Colts the ball, and they cost them points on the board. His mistakes have not allowed Dallas to score points yet. First and 10 at the 25-yard line. Trudeau will put it up the first time, gets good protection. He's going deep for Sean Dawkins. And covered well by Larry Brown downfield. Dawkins was on the receiving end of a 69-yard pass play in the first half. Well, there's battling for the ball. Then there's kind of like underneath the rim in basketball, battling for position on the ball. And that's just a good physical match between two players, one offense, one defense, both with an equal right for the ball. Dawkins will come out of the game and Clarence Verdan will go in as a wide receiver wide to the right second down and 10 coming up Ted March who's back for a second tour of duty with the Colts here is Roosevelt Potts and this time Potts is stopped and it took about three Cowboys to do it led by Ken Norton and he still picked up three well, you see those shoulders on Roosevelt Potts and those are some big shoulders and you want those shoulders pointed at that goalpost down on the other side of the field. You don't want to get him turned sideways. If you're a cold coach, you want him going north and south. Right now he's heading for the bench and replaced by Anthony Johnson, the do-it-all running back. Dan Marino, by the way, suffered a torn Achilles tendon, and he may be gone for the year. A tremendous blow to the Miami Dolphins. Third down and seven out of the shotgun on the 28-yard line. Run completes it to Hester. He does not have the first down. So Hester on a crossing pattern was shy of the sticks. A gain of only six yards with the veteran Bill Bates on the stop, and so the Colts will have to kick. And this is the situation, Dick, for the Dallas offense where you see them going much like a heavyweight does when you got somebody in trouble and they've had a little success for you. You go for that shot. You've got them set up. You go for a knockout punch and look for Aikman in this offense to go deep and go early. Ron Stark will kick it and Kevin Williams is back for the Dallas Cowboys. Line kick will send Williams back to his 12 yard line. Several Colts had missed before the play was finally made by the rookie Ray Buchanan, 54-yard punt. So Troy Aikman, who completed 12 of 16 for 133 yards and one touchdown. And this is the story of Troy Aikman's first half, one that that one sack on a blitz by, by Stargell from the backside definitely had to shake up Aikman a little bit from his injury standpoint. 
But the biggest difference between he and Trudeau is he's showing why he's one of the top, if not the top quarterbacks in the NFL right now. He is not making those critical mistakes. Troy Aikman, who uh, not 100%, as we heard, with his various back injuries, shoulder, what have you, on the 26-yard line, two tight ends. Emmett Smith has been stymied so far, and that story continues. Smith gained only 40 yards in the first half, and he loses one here with Tony Siragusa, an inside tackle, making the play with Dwayne Bickett helping. And that entire cold defense did make an early mistake against Emmett Smith, allowing that touchdown run on the big cutback. But since then, they have swarmed Emmett Smith, and you never see one Colt making a tackle. If Saragusa's in the backfield, he knows he's got Clancy, he knows he's got Bickett, he knows he has Harad. They are going to the ball. Sam Clancy, of course, has been playing for Steve Emperor, the injured tackle. Second down and 11, and the pass off the fingertips of Novacek. And that'll bring up third and long. The Colt defense has played extremely well, and they have lost two key operatives. And you look at the offense that has had several forays inside the Dallas territory. Four times the Colts have gotten inside the 30, and they've managed only three points. So the team is very much in the game despite an 11-point deficit. And this is the one situation, if you are the Dallas Cowboys, you become a bit concerned. They are not converting their third down opportunities right now, and that's mainly because their third down opportunities are at least seven, eight, nine, ten yards. Novacek in motion, and the pass to Alvin Harper on the slant in. He's got the first down. Ashley Ambrose makes the tackle, but not before Harper, who had a, a big day last week in yards per catch, picks up 14. And Harper's a receiver that has not so much blossomed as he has gotten the opportunities from Jimmy Johnson and Norv Turner, the coaches of the Dallas Cowboys that run this offense have decided to start giving Alvin Harper the ball. Last week, only had two catches. Of course, then again, he only had 88 yards to go with those two catches. North Turner likens him to John Taylor in the way he's developing as that second receiver with good strength. Here is Darrell Johnston, the fullback out of the backfield who makes a reception and gets eight yards with Ambrose defending. Johnston was a big factor in the first Dallas score in their first possessions of the game. And that right there is something we saw Dallas's offense do early, is getting big chunks on first downs. That's, in some cases, why your third down conversion rate can look sort of deceiving when you see 3 of 12 for conversions on third down by the Dallas Cowboys. When you're looking at a lot of, a lot of second, and, second and twos and second and threes, your third downs become a lot less significant. Johnston already has his best day as a receiver with five catches. Second down and two. And the give is to Emmett Smith. He'll have the first down as he reaches the midfield stripe. Three yards for Emmett. John Hand making the tackle. The Dallas Cowboys making their first ever appearance at the Hoosier Dome. In fact, they're the only NFL team never to have played here in Indianapolis before today. And uh, it's an unusual rivalry. The teams haven't played since 1984. So household rivals, well, not the case. First and ten at midfield. 14-3, the Cowboys lead early third quarter. Aikman's got time, dumps it off to Emmett Smith. Smith gets by Bickett, turns on the motor and gets the first down inside the 40, a gain of 11, and the Cowboys are driving. And that's a play there, Dick, that's hardly like you would refer to as that's how you draw him up. Well, you don't draw him up to dump it into the flat to a running back that's being covered by a linebacker really pretty well. But what you can't allow for from a defensive standpoint is this great Dallas team speed, especially offense. That speed by Smith and Irvin and Harper and in some cases Novacek for a tight end can really give defenses problems because when you stop them, they can get away from you and make take -off. On the 39, here's the gift to Smith. And Smith gets a four-yard gain with Bickett on the tackle. And this is becoming one of those drives that you'd refer to as sort of a deflator. You get the offense isn't doing much, the defense has been performing for the Colts, then the Dallas offense just comes out here and puts together something that can best be described as methodical. Just bam, bam, three, four, two, 11, 10, 10, 11. Just getting first down, grinding out the clock and taking a little bit of the air valve and taking some of the air out of these Colts. Second down and six, Emmett Smith gets a hole off the right side and gets the first down inside the 25. 
John Baylor making the tackle, so now the Cowboys are getting their running game going with Emmett Smith. And here it is, just Emmett Smith up behind Big Williams and Gogan on the right side. Look at Williams, 79, just seals that entire side off. You talk about Irvin, look at Irvin. Button has the one, two, three, four, five. That's not so much as a, I always refer to wide receivers blocking techniques as kind of a chicken fight. They're just sort of pecking each other at the head and trying to distract each other. No sounds coming from him. Here's Smith. Emmett Smith gained 40 yards, Randy, at halftime and already has 24. So it looks like the uh, Cowboys during the uh, intermission decided that they wanted to get their running back going and to use up the clock with the lead, and it's been working for them. Well, you talk about players don't watch stats. I guarantee you Emmett Smith can quote you exactly how many yards he is behind everybody that's in front of him in the, in the, the race for the rushing title right now. Emmett thinks he's still in it was very disappointed he couldn't play towards the end of the game last week he threw against Green Bay and he's going to get plenty of carries today and he has got to have a big game if he has any hope. Second down and eight, fake pass and a wide open receiver is there and Irvin had it and Eugene Daniel defending was beaten on the play and I'll tell you what Aikman and Irvin will say boy if we did that a hundred times we'll probably click 98. Well let's check out the very end of this play because you just said, here's Irvin wide open. Sometimes you just guess right. What should I do, put my arms up? Yeah, I'll put them up now. <laughs> Daniel just gets lucky and says, right now, I'll put them up. And he knocks the ball out. And Troy Aikman knows he had six points right there. And hey, sometimes <laughs> oh, ability and luck intercede. <laughs> 11th play of the drive. And now a, a timeout. <laughs> The Colts are calling the timeout. Third and eight. Aikman to the sidelines. Third down and eight. The Cowboys started on their 26-yard line. They've had the ball for a little over five minutes. They've spread everyone out, including the tight end, Novacek. He makes the catch. And a gain of 10 yards. It was third and eight, and they've got enough for the first down. So this Dallas drive, and as you mentioned, it could be one of those wilting back breaking drives for the Cowboys continues. And this is what we're seeing, uh, the real difference between a Colt team that's trying to execute and a Dallas Cowboys offense that really does execute. And the biggest key is the quarterback, the guy pulling the trigger. I, I really happen to think Troy Aikman is the most indispensable part of this Dallas offense. They could win without a halfback. They could win without one of the wide receivers. They couldn't win without Troy. Johnston goes in motion, first and 10, outside the 10-yard line. Emmett Smith trying to go outside. Is piled up after a short gain of maybe a yard or two, leading the way with Sam Clancy, who is Empton's replacement. Don Mikowski has been warming up on the sidelines, and still no word as to whether the Colts will make a change at quarterback. Well, he's got a helmet on now. At least he took the baseball hat. progress. Might be, progress. might be a good sign yeah. for the Colts. <laughs> he's going to take a few snaps from his center right there, Kurt Loudermilk. <laughs> so we got a former Viking working with a former Packer in Indianapolis. Well, we're in the central free part agency of the, great. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're in the central part of the country anyway. Why not? Second and nine. They can get a first down without getting a touchdown. And motion is Irvin to the right. Aikman has Emmett Smith, who's hit at about the five-yard line. Will be third down. Gain of five on the play. John Hand making the tackle. But you're right about the quarterback, and that's one of the reasons why the 49ers were always successful when they had uh, Montana or Young with all the weapons. The running back is just one weapon. The quarterback gets the ball to the other people. He carries a lot of weapons with him. Well, you hear often in golf, the, uh, the gentleman's next to the tees with that, you're the man. Well, the quarterback in every offense is the man, and he is the most, the most important key to the offense. And this is a situation where a quarterback especially Aikman, loves to go to his wide receiver. Novacek wide to the right, and a running play on third and five, and Emmett Smith is stopped shy of the first down marker by Jeff Harrod, who has played a terrific game, even though he hasn't been 100% at weak side linebacker, and it'll bring up fourth down. It was a nice job by Harrod and the safety, Jason Belzer, on that play, filling up and stopping this. Check this out, right in the middle of the screen, 54. Watch the job he does. He doesn't overbite. He comes in, gets the first hit. Belzer comes up with a little help. 
That was a nice defensive play by Harad at a very important time. This field goal would only make it 17-13. Eddie Murray. 17-3. check goes in well we'll check those numbers that I know the Cowboys are getting more than the Colts bargained for on a fake field goal Novacek runs in for the touchdown two yards out well last week special teams coach Joe Avanzano calls an onside kick they execute it and make it and it's a great execution by Dallas and a basic clueless effort by the field goal block team that is a very basic mistake. And Eddie Murray, I think they won't run this one. Murray will kick the extra point to make it 21 to three in favor of the Cowboys. Joe Avisano had something up his short sleeves this week, didn't he? Check has the option. You can call Omaha and call it off. Watch this hole. This is an Omaha. This is oh boy. <laughs> you take that every time they give it to you. Good execution by at least one side of the ball. First rushing touchdown of Jay Novacek's career. Eddie Murray with an end-over-end -end kick and Verdan to return at the goal line for the Colts. Verdan, nowhere to go. I'll go the other way. And it's Darren Smith from behind after a 27-yard return. Trudeau does not have his helmet on. Bad news for him. Good news, though, for Don Mikowski, who will be the quarterback. We'll be back. Motivated <laughs> pitcher is demoted to fourth Ooh. starter down there in Atlanta. He's fired up and might be as fired up as Mr. Mikowski here. He's finally getting a chance to get some meaningful playing time. His first appearance since September the 20th, 1992, in the regular season. And his first pass is caught by Dawkins. Sean Dawkins still on his feet. And we may see a flag here. One of the Cowboys jumped on top of the pile. No flag is thrown. A 17-yard pickup and a first down. Dixon Edwards might have been the last man on there. But the fact is that Dawkins just wouldn't go down, so he's fair game. I think somebody might have taken the tweeters out of the referees or the officials' <laughs> whistles around here because nobody's stopping when they should stop. Of course, nobody told Sean Dawkins he's supposed to go down when he's got eight guys Ooh. trying to tackle him. <laughs> You know, Russell Maryland and Darren Smith collided, and uh, their helmets cracked. So it's a first down on the 44-yard line. So Mikowski off to a hot start with his first pass. Well, we know he can start a drive. Can he finish one? Stepping up, and the pass is complete. Again, it's Dawkins, the rookie from California. It's a first down for the Colts into Dallas territory. And, Dick, this is a situation you've got two people in Mikowski and Dawkins that probably work together on a regular basis on the scout team, running other teams' offenses. Mikowski has a better mesh with the receivers that are second and third team because he sees them more often than he does with the starters. Dawkins has caught five passes for 114 yards, so like Roosevelt Potts, two rookies go over 100 yards in receiving and rushing today for the first time in their career. First down and a play fake, and Mikowski lost from the pocket. Haley is chasing him toward the sideline, and Mikowski is a pretty tough hombre in his own right, doesn't go out of bounds, and takes the hit after picking up three yards. Tolbert on the stop. We're here at the Hoosier Dome, over 60,000 on hand. 60,453, first visit ever by the Dallas Cowboys. Both teams two and two coming in. And despite a couple of uh, tough injuries to the Indianapolis defense, Steve Entman with a bad knee injury, the Colts hanging in there until the fake field goal and the run by Novacek to give the Cowboys a 21-3 lead. Don Mikowski, however, is coming to relief with Jack Trudeau at quarterback. Second down and seven at the 42, and to give the box wide open spaces off the left side. And he's within a yard or so of the first down marker, a gain of six that time, with Norton and Gant on the tackle. And this is just the sting and fire that I think this Colt offense needed from the very beginning of this second half. Mikowski's got this team fired up. And the way they were fired up the most in the first half was watching Roosevelt Potts piling into defenders and taking three, four, five of the Cowboys to bring them down. Talking about Dawkins in his first 
effort. How about Roosevelt Potts? 111 rushing yards. They better just give the ball to number 42. Third and two. Jeff Cope might have moved. Potts is stopped before he gets to the line of scrimmage. It'll be against Dallas, and it will be a Colt first down. sides against the Cowboys it's number 77 offside 77 defense five yards first down just a case of Jeff Coat guessing wrong you know some might think new quarterback new cadence but uh, that has more of an effect on the offensive players jumping off sides and it does the defensive players defenses instincts and guess a lot time a lot of the times and Jeff Coat just guessed ah! wrong Murkowski in his seventh season, signed by the Colts as a free agent. Jesse Hester goes in motion. Deep drop and a big rush by Tolbert on Murkowski. He fires an alert play. The closest receiver to him was Reggie Langhorn, but no defender. So Murkowski played that well. Oh, he played it real well. I mean, every time, if you think, if you're a fan and you want to see if you can do this, run as fast as you can with somebody about 290 pounds chasing you as hard as you can to your left and try to throw a ball to your right. And then worry about protecting yourself so that guy tonight doesn't pile drive it. Kowski has suffered his share of injuries, and of course, after he suffered strained ligaments in his left ankle, he lost the starting job to Brett Favre in Green Bay. So, hopes to find a new home here in Indianapolis. Second and 10, Verdan in as a wide receiver. Ball on the 32 of the Cowboys. Here's the blitz, and pops his deck right away. And the Dallas Cowboys timed that perfectly, led by Ken Norton, the middle linebacker. If you're a quarterback and you see this coming, this is kind of, let's make the handoff, and better thee than me, Roosevelt Potts. Here comes Norton. Right up the middle. Mikowski looks back and says, I'm glad I don't have the ball. <laughs> Ten tackles last week in his debut as the middle linebacker in the starting role. And what he's brought to the Dallas middle linebacker position, I think, is enthusiasm, experience, and intensity. For Washington, Roper, and Jones in. Pass defense for the Cowboys in the pass. Incomplete flag is down. Hester was the intended receiver. He lost his helmet and everything. But there's a penalty marker down. What a hit put on by James Washington. Mikowski had some nice protection there. And as Trudeau had tried to do, he tries to put a ball into a tight spot. Charles Haley gets run around the corner by Zephros Moss. And here comes the hit. No helmet involved by the defender, all shoulder pad and arms for that big hit by Washington. So it'll be fourth down. The penalty is against the Colts. And then uh, it was declined by the Dallas Cowboys. So it is fourth down. Good decision by Ted Marchabote. He doesn't have to punt here. He's got to get a first down at some point. Fourth and 11. Mikowski back to throw. And his pass is caught by Johnson. And he's shy of the first down. If you're going to go for it on fourth down, you better get to the sticks. And John Roper, the former Chicago Bear, sealed up Johnson after a gain of 10. So uh, turning the ball over on downs, Mikowski didn't finish it. And it's Dallas ball. Stockton, the Cowboys in front 21 to 3 in a perfect game for Jimmy Johnson his team comfortably in front right now and yet perhaps being outplayed by the Colts which sets up his speeches this week before the 49er game next Sunday well defensively they're being out outplayed between the 20s but once the Colts get inside about the 30 yard line they cannot execute and the offense with Dallas has done everything right two tight ends and Irvin in the slant pattern we've seen that many times today with a 15-yard pickup with Coryat making the tackle. And it's a first down for the Cowboys, shy of the 40-yard line. Talking about the uh, Colts' problems, and you have to credit Dallas's defense to a great extent, but not entirely. Five times today, the Colts have been inside. The Cowboy 30 have come away with only a three-pointer. 
and 10 at the 39 of Dallas. Half a minute remaining in the quarter. Emmett Smith gets by one defender and dives forward. This has not been a uh, glorious day for Emmett Smith. The uh, Colts obviously keying on Emmett and Coryat again on the tackle. That may be the last play of this third session. Well, you, you can stop some of the Dallas Cowboys, but the other ones will make you pay. If you stop Emmett Smith, then you better look out for Michael Irvin and you better look out for Alvin Harper. And as the Colts have learned, you sure better look out for Jay Novacek. I don't care if he's on the sideline, you better watch out for Jay Novacek. <laughs> and that is the end of the third quarter here at the Hoosier Dome with the score, the Dallas Cowboys 21 and the Indianapolis Colts 3. News for the Colts in the second half. Well, we talked about how important first down was for both teams coming into this game. And Dallas has averaged over six yards on first down. And on the passes that, that Aikman's thrown on first down, he's 9 of 10 for 112 yards. So a lot of those have come in smaller chunks to Johnston and, and Harper and, and Irvin. But Dallas and their execution is the most impressive part of this game, especially in light of how poorly the Colts have executed offensively. Second down and six on the Dallas 43. Aikman to throw. And the pass is incomplete. There's a flag down upfield, however. Emmett Smith was the intended receiver, and Jeff Harrod was defending. But see how Aikman hung in there against the pressure. And the penalty will be defensive holding against the uh, Colts. Well, what's one way to make sure a receiver can't run away from you is to grab him and be caught. Holding number 33 defense, five yards. Automatic first down. That was Ashley Ambrose who replaced Chris Good, who had the sprained uh, neck. But we saw him on the sidelines, and the news was better for him than it was for Steve Empman, who's had a very bad knee injury today with a torn knee injury in three different areas. First down for the Cowboys. They're on their 48 yard line. Early here in the fourth quarter, Emmett Smith looking for running room, finds it. An outstanding move by Emmett Smith behind the line of scrimmage, and he found the daylight, got 15 yards into a cold territory. Good example there of what happens when the defense does not fill backside. Little delay draw to Emmett. He stops, comes all the way back, and you know what he gets here? He gets a great block on the backside by Michael Irvin. Look at Irvin, 88, working against Daniel. I mean, here's a wide receiver, and he's blocking for a halfback that's supposed to be running way on the other side of the field. That's drilling, and that's disciplined by the Dallas wide receivers. And a first down. Aikman looking to dump it off again, and he does successfully to Emmett Smith. He may have another first down. Sam Clancy makes the tackle from behind. A gain of nine yards, and that's there all day for the Dallas Cowboys. Aikman with the short pass up the middle to Smith. Well, here's the definition of kind of easing and sneaking your way out of the backfield. Look at those eyes. Where can I go? Where's the opening? There it is. Nobody noticed me. Puts a little burst on. Troy sees him. Makes Corey at pay a little bit with a quick cutback. But these weapons for Dallas are impressive. When you're up 21-3 and you're making things happen, even Jimmy Johnson and the rest of the guys on the sideline can take a few chuckles. They're a classic who came into the game still as the leading rusher for the Dallas Cowboys. He played the first two games before Emmett Smith came back. Gets the first down. Clancy on the tackle as we bring you up to date on the scores. Minnesota leading Tampa Bay. And uh, the story as far as injuries other than this one, Dan Marino out for the year with a uh, torn Achilles tendon and Scott Mitchell his replacement has thrown two touchdown passes in his stead. Marino needs to get, get a hold of Lawrence Taylor and ask him how he come back from that Achilles at that age. First down on the 21 flag down Irvin on the reception and it's Ambrose on the tackle 17 yard pickup. And the penalty is going to be on the offense this time and that'll nullify the big gain to Irvin. Well, I know Michael Irvin doesn't like this, and he's discussing it with the official, but that's something Michael Irvin and Alvin Harper do. They do push off. It's the taut technique, and when it works, it's great. Pass interference, number 88, offense, 10 yards, repeat first down. But when it doesn't work, it's going back the other way, and that's one thing you learn early. You can always complain, and the best people to complain to officials about calls are coaches, not players. 
Coaches have an influence. Players are more of a distraction or a nuisance to an official. He can talk. The other guy can't. First and 20 back at the 31. On the draw play, here's Lassick. And Lassick gets inside the 25-yard line, a gain of eight yards that time. Arad making the tackle. Lassick coming into the game as the leading rusher on the year, gaining 202 yards, scoring three touchdowns. And a nice job again by Michael Irvin. Backside, away from the play, sees it's coming back. He breaks down and he blocks. He kind of bear hugs, but he blocks. He got caught for pushing off and they caught him on that penalty. He kind of held and hugged and they didn't get him for that one. So Michael, it's about a watch. Second down and 12 at the 23. He's caught six passes for 82 yards today as Michael Irvin. Aikman now finds Novacek and it's incomplete. He was open anyway. Quentin Coriat, the closest defender to him. 12.03 remaining in the fourth quarter, and the Cowboys using the time, leading 21 to 3. Boy, Aikman so far, 19 of 26, 204 yards and one touchdown, and he has had several balls drop. That one comes to mind. Also, the other deep one over the middle to Michael Irvin. So it's a fine, just a performance like he's had the last couple of weeks. You can't find a chink or a flaw in this guy's armor. It's always tight. It's always thinking. Third down and 12 for Aikman, and the pass is caught by Novacek. Baylor, the strong safety defending on the play. They may be shy of the first down, a pickup of 10 yards, so they are short of it, and Eddie Murray will come on to try the field goal, and we're going to be watching 84. <laughs> Although I, I think this time Murray's going to put his foot to it. Last time the Cowboys attempted a field goal from close range, Novacek, the holder, ran it in for a two-yard touchdown. You know, Jimmy Johnson did an interview with Leslie Visser last year and mentioned he likes tropical fish because if they die, you throw them away. Well, Jimmy's got the same attitude with kickers. If you die on him, he throws you away. He won't be throwing Murray away. This cook kick of 30 yards is good after Eddie Murray tied a club record with five field goals last week. So it's now 24 to 3, and we'll return to the Hoosier Dome after this message from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Is the meat you saw on the sideline there. Eric Williams, Kevin Gogan, 2 and A, Stepnoski, all those guys. They've kept people off of Aikman. Here is Verdain returning for the Cow the Colts. Penalty marker down. We may have an illegal block on Indianapolis as Verdan is tackled at the 20-yard line by Matt Vanderbeek. So that penalty uh, marked off against Indianapolis. The Colts are two and two on the year. They have been an up and down team uh, losing to Miami here in a close game beating Cincinnati and Cleveland their biggest win over the Browns before getting shellacked to Denver last week by 22 points And their next game will be at Miami but as we said, Dan Marino's season is over with a torn Achilles tendon. Bill Eagle block in the back, number 99, receiving team during the return. My Half the distance penalty, first down. Michael Brandon. Working on Billy Bates. There's Brandon right in the back. The Colts coming in have lost to two teams. You might want to add a third because they're beating themselves today. With over 100 yards and Steve Enton with a very serious knee injury for the Colts. First and 10 at the 10 yard line. Kenneth Dan Gann is in as a nickel back for the Cowboys. Makowski is hit and Gant nearly intercepts the pass. Tremendous pressure put on by Jimmy Jones who has replaced Tony Casillas at left tackle up front. Makowski's seen that before and shaken up is Zephros Moss, the former Dallas Cowboy. And that was an all-out attack. And this is an opportunity for Dallas to create a problem. When you have a defensive lineman coming that free, that's what happens when you create a problem. And Jimmy Jones was completely free coming through there. And Moss is in a situation caught on that AstroTurf that every offensive lineman hates when the weight's all on one leg. 
Moss acquired uh, by trade from the Cowboys in 1989. While we have a moment, let's check in with Jim Nance in our New York studios for an update. Jim? All right, Jim, thank you very much. And a big win for the Giants today, uh, winning on the road. And, uh, you know, in Washington, all they care about is football and football. And uh, there's going to be a lot of heat in that town for the next week or so. Well, a, lot, a lot of the problems Washington has, has have been injury related. They've lost an awful lot of guys that they come in limping. You would think they'd make a better showing at RFK, but you know the Giants are a team that, that I saw earlier this season, and you know we've all had a look at what they're doing. And this is a team that Dan Reeves has taken basically the same talent that was laughed at for two years under Ray Hanley, giving them discipline, giving them direction, and you know whoever thinks a, a general and a leader doesn't make that big a difference, I'll take a look at the New York Giants. Reeves has made an impact. Second down and 10 at the 10-yard line now following the injury. Kevin Cole has replaced Zephros Moss at right tackle. There's Cole. Here's Potts. Bounds off the defender. And it brings it out to the 15-yard line where uh, Everett and Brown makes the tackle. A pickup of five yards for Roosevelt Potts going over the 100 mark for the first time in his career. He's a rookie from Northeast Louisiana. Third down. Makowski being chased. Pressure up for grabs. Incomplete. In all due respect for Makowski, He's quarterbacking way behind, and you know that the Cowboys are coming at him. They are coming after him, and you know how they're coming after him any way they can. Look at John Roper. Talked about him coming over from Chicago. A stand-up defensive tackle, and you're using a linebacker to do it. What you get, you lose a little strength, but you get a lot of quickness. And there's the effect of the quickness coming off late and making Mikowski throw up what could have been six for the defense, just a little floater. Fourth down and Ron Stark kicking from the goal line. Kevin Williams. Back for the Cowboys. A fine kick. Williams is going to try this one. From his own 40 gets driven back. But his forward progress will be about the 43. 48 yard kick by Ron Stark. One of the best. Grant on the tackle. Dallas. Back here at the Hoosier Dome along with Randy Cross. This is Dick Stockton. The Dallas Cowboys open up a tight halftime affair of 14 to 3 with two long possessions and drives for 10 points using over 12 and a half minutes going 76 and then 61 yards for their scores. Now they have the ball again with 10 22 to go on their own 43. Jim Price the second tight end along with Jay Novacek. Johnston the fullback in motion and the give is to Emmett Smith back in the game. Smith to trying to get close to the 90 yard mark may have it as he crosses over into cold territory in a gain of eight yards Bickett and Coriat couple of linebackers make the play and this is this is just you know early reading basic type of football see Troy take snap see Troy give ball to a Emmett see Emmett run see Emmett run some more and see Emmett get good blocks to run <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Emmett Smith gained 71 yards last week in his first start since signing in three quarters of work he now has gained 92 yards and 22 carries so he's the workhorse again second down and two and here is Emmett he's got the first down what a nifty bit of running by Emmett Smith despite as we pointed out with Leslie Visser in the pregame show of the NFL today the hamstring problem in his right leg he's got a first down after a five yard pickup or well, Jimmy Johnson talks about that hamstring it's nothing unusual for Emmett to, to tweak his hamstrings a little bit the only difference is he normally does it when he gets tired in training camp and you've got a couple weeks to ease him in and out of work and let that thing heal but you know Jimmy says he doesn't have that luxury right now he's got to go with Emmett and the reason he took Emmett out last week is Emmett told him it felt like if I wanted to really open it up I'd pop it well, he's been opening up today pretty good. First and 10 on the 44. Aikman finds an open receiver. Michael Irvin gets by one defender. And he gets by again. Eugene Daniel and is out of bounds at about the 15-yard line. That's a 30-yard gain for the receiver who leads the NFL in reception yards. He hasn't heard his numbers today. 
Baylor pushed him out of bounds. If there's a better offense right now in the NFL, I haven't seen it so far in 93. Take your choice, pick your team. But with the weapons all the way around these Dallas Cowboys have, they have got everything. We talk about the weapons. Look at the protection the offensive line gives them. Big Nate Newton working inside. Mark Tuane working on John Hand. They're not getting close to Troy. They had to get him for a sack. They had to bring a safety to do it. First down on the 14. Again, Johnston in motion and Smith up the middle. He gets to the 10-yard line. How would you compare? How would you compare the 49ers offense to the Cowboys offense? Two teams with a lot of weapons. I, I think they're fairly close. Uh, it's all a matter of being on a roll, and it's a matter of execution. Right now, Steve Young and that offense in San Francisco are just a little bit off, and he'll get a chance to prove that he's the best quarterback next week when Dallas meets the, meets the San Francisco 49ers. But Dallas right now, with their execution and their quarterback spreading the ball around like he's spreading around here, as you see from the passes, you can't stop this offense when it is on this kind of a roll. Second and five, here's Emmett Smith trying to go outside. And he is hit at about the eight-yard line. Willie Pegues and John Baylor making the tackle with just under eight minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. A one-yard gain, and Emmett Smith now at 103 yards. What did he tell us? He says, I'm going to catch every last one of them, all the guys ahead of me in the rushing derby. <laughs> you're a great back, Emmett. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck making up three, 400 yards on some of the guys you're chasing. <laughs> And, you know, with all of the uh, great varieties, you point out, of uh, offensive weapons this team has, they don't have to uh, play him like the Lions play Barry Sanders. Now Emmett goes in motion, third and four at the eight-yard line. Aikman goes down and holding on to the ball that time. Remember, he was hit from the blind side and fumbled in the first half. This time, Sam Clancy with Willie Pegues up front. You talk about umbrella defenses and, and blanket defenses. Watch the, the coverage that happens back here so that Troy cannot throw the ball. Good protection, still good protection, but better coverage. The Colts did a fine job of covering all that talent down the field, and the linemen did not give up, and they kept pressuring Troy Aikman. Eddie Murray trying to kick the second field goal of the second half, and the kick is perfect. 32-yard field goal by Murray. He has kicked a 30-yarder earlier here in this fourth quarter, and that raises the Cowboy ante to 27-3. Oh, look. As a starting pitcher. A lot of pitches around the league couldn't be number four. Kick goes out of bounds, and the Colts, uh, touche, <laughs> will uh, begin from the 35-yard line. Sixty thousand four hundred and fifty three on hand and uh, they will not go home thinking the Colts didn't have opportunities and they'll be shaking their head because four turnovers by the Colts three interceptions by Trudeau golden chances for Indianapolis really to keep this game close in the first half but they coughed it up threw it away and that's been the story the way the Cowboys have rolled away well offense has been the name of the game for the Dallas Cowboys their offense is executed wonderfully and the Indianapolis Colts' offense is executed poorly enough to help them out, help them out an awful lot. First and 10 at the 35, Mikowski hit Sean Dawkins and a first down near midfield. Kevin Smith on the tackle, a gain of 13. Hurry up offense, and we'll see a lot of Sean Dawkins, the rookie from Cal, who missed 21 games in camp. Aikman can relax now. He has done his job. Mikowski has Anthony Johnson out of the backfield. Nine yards on that play for the Colts, but time working against them, as is the scoreboard. Warming up on the sideline is Jason Garrett, the free agent from Princeton, who is going to be coming in for Troy Aikman the next time the Cowboys get the ball. Second down and two out of the shotgun for Mikowski. And the pass intended for Dawkins overthrown. And that'll bring up third and short. Coming into the game, Jimmy Johnson said, no pep talks, and I guess coaches can't go to you every week and say, look, you got to win this game because you run out of that. They don't want to hear you that long, and this was a game he thought the best not to play with him. You know, it might work in college for a Lou Holtz that tries to sell the idea that everybody he plays is ranked number one in the country and great, but Jimmy Johnson realizes on this level, players have to fire themselves up. You can only crank them up probably half a dozen times a year. 
and goodness knows he'll get, uh, he'll get at least a half a dozen opportunities from here on out to pump these guys up. Anthony Johnson runs for the first down inside the 40-yard line. Washington on the tackle, James Washington, and a gain of six yards for Anthony Johnson. 49ers are coming up next for the Dallas Cowboys at Texas Stadium. And so the 49ers watching this game in their bye week, so it's an offense the Cowboys can unleash. Here's the pass to Johnson out of the backfield, but putting on the clamps in a hurry was Dixon Edwards. And the key for the 49ers when they face this Dallas Cowboy team, Steve Young and the 49er offense cannot turn the ball over to the Dallas Cowboys as, as uh, Trudeau and these Colts did to them. They can't make those mistakes. Young had problems the first couple weeks of the season. He has settled down, but that'll be the key. Turnovers to decide the game next week. Second and nine, a completed pass. Kevin Smith pushing him out of bounds, and it is a first down. The only thing that went out that went faster than Dawkins out of bounds was Mikowski backwards after he got smacked on that last play. He took a heck of a shot there right as he was delivering that ball to Dawkins from Kenneth, Kenneth Grant Gant coming on a blitz. Check this out. Yikes. That's why a quarterback wears rib pads. Dawkins has caught six passes, by the way, for 130 yards. First down. Pressure on Mikowski. He's in trouble. And he got away and completed the pass to Charles Arbuckle. That was a tremendous bit of escaping by Mikowski, who looked like he was going down two or three times. Seven-yard game. It was a highlight film scramble by Mikowski. It was a great effort. Second down and three on the draw play, Anthony Johnson. And a good block. Gann out of there on a good block inside. 11-yard pickup. Kevin Smith made the tackle. And the uh, Colts are getting into position. You don't want to go overboard here of maybe scoring their first touchdown. Well, they, they have been in position before, but it was a nice block there by Kevin Call, who's in for Zephos Moss, who went down with a bad knee. Call just squashed Gant. I mean, you got a 310-pound tackle against a 189-pound safety. That I'd say that should happen more often than not. First and goal, the ball at the five with 4.07 remaining in the ball game. 4.16! Mikowski went after it, so did one of the Cowboys. And it's uh, Colts ball as Mikowski recovered the uh, loose ball and uh, a loss of seven yards resulted. Anthony Johnson misconnected. So a fumble. <laughs> Nearly the fifth turnover of the game for the Colts. Mikowski's pass drilled, and it's intercepted by Ken Norton. Penalty marker down, however, at the five-yard line, and we may get this back. Yeah, I think it's going to be defensive pass interference because Jesse Hester got mugged. And I'm talking about mugged on that last play by James Washington down right about the goal line, about the four-yard line. Thomas Everett has intercepted two passes today for the Cowboys, but Norton may not get in the books with one here, pending uh, Gordon McCarter's announcement. Well, they're, 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 they're talking about it for a while, and maybe they were just kidding again. <laughs> Sometimes they kid, and they say, we just wanted to show a little yellow here. That's right. <laughs> a little air time. Hard to get on the air if you don't throw those flags. <laughs> Three forty nine on the okay. clock and the Cowboys have salted this game away leading twenty seven to three. OK watch Hester and watch what happens right down in this area of the field. Come down come across. That was what you Here's referred to as a little early contact. <laughs> the man who intercepted touched in front of the receiver and the defender. Therefore, the contact had no bearing on right. the interception. It is first down. Randy, you called that. They were just kidding. <laughs> what he's saying is there was contact. It is illegal contact. But as Norton cuts in front, the contact behind him becomes irrelevant. And Norton does get himself an interception. 
And that is, we'll check his uh, third. Well, we'll check how many interceptions he has. In any event, the Cowboys have the ball and they have a first down. Jason Garrett is in at quarterback. That'll be all for Aikman. And Derek Lassett carries the ball to the 31-yard line. Jason Garrett out of Princeton. You know, he's a good story. I think everybody assumed that Millen would be the backup quarterback here, but he sort of played his way out of that position, and Garrett has played well enough to be in the backup role, and he's been all over, not just Princeton. I mean, he's been in this league and that league. He's, he's been in more cities than a FedEx package on a bad day, but uh, he's, still, he's still number two now in front of Millen there, number seven. Hugh Millen, formerly with New England, second down and nine, so Garrett... Running things now as the game winds down to three minutes to go. And the pass was intended for Tyrone Williams, a rookie, as uh, Jimmy Johnson not taking any chances now with the 49er game coming up next week to get an injury in the latter stages of this game. Well, he's got his backups in. Now he's trying to get them all a letter. You've got to have a certain amount of plays or you don't letter for the year. So the big D, get the Royal D. The big D. Yeah, silver jacket. You can walk around campus very proud when you get the D. There's a big campus down there in Dallas, and this team's doing well. This is, uh, they call it America's team, but it's kind of like Howard Cosell was when he was in his heyday. I think every, people in the country are not vague about this team. They either love the Cowboys or hate the Cowboys. Well, there's a lot of love about them these days. Garrett dumps it off to Gaynor, and the pass is incomplete. The word from the Miami uh, Dolphins uh, public relations department is that now they say they were premature saying that uh, Dan Marino is out for the year with a torn Achilles tendon. So uh, Scott Mitchell came in, so they're going to make a further evaluation upon further review, and we'll know more about it. We just had one tomorrow. of those. A little further review, and they were just <laughs> kidding. Here comes the punt. John Jett will be kicking, and Clarence for Dan back deep with 3-0-1 remaining. Here is Verdan at the 21-yard line. And he won't go far. The happy Jerry Jones watching the Cowboys win their third straight game after losing their first two. Five turnovers helping the Cowboy cause. And for Ken Norton, his first regular season interception. He had one in the playoffs last year. But Jerry Jones and these Cowboys, I firmly believe, in their hearts, believe they are undefeated so far this year. I think they're treating those first two losses almost like they didn't exist. In fact, Emmett Smith told us last night, Dick, hey, we're 2-0. We didn't even worry about those first two games. We are 2-0. Well, you're 3-0 now. And Philadelphia is no longer undefeated. If uh, Chicago goes on and wins that game, it'll be 4-1, so Dallas is getting closer. The Giants at 4-1 would be tied for the lead in the division. First and 10 at the 26. Makowski completes to Dawkins, and he's hit at the 30-yard line, making the hit was Kevin Smith. And also in on the play was Brock Marion. 237 remaining. Be very interesting a clash next week, Randy, because the 49ers already are two games behind the Saints, who play at Pittsburgh. And if they fall three behind, it can almost kiss the division goodbye. Hester goes out of bounds with a loss to Dallas. Well, especially when you're looking at a, a New Orleans offense that's developed the offense they have with Wade Wilson at quarterbacks made a huge difference. You know, just as Troy Aikman has made a great difference for the Dallas Cowboys in this organization, throwing to guys like Michael Irvin and celebrates on the sideline a little bit. Wade Wilson has made an incredible difference in the offense in New Orleans. They finally have a guy that they figure, Carl Smith, the offensive coordinator, and Jim Moore in New Orleans, figure we can get the ball to this guy in his hands, and he'll make the right decision. Makowski was going to Dawkins, incomplete with 2.20 to play. And Wade Wilson has been a stabilizing influence at quarterback. He's gotten terrific protection. William Rolfe, the rookie right tackle, from Louisiana Tech has really been a big boost to the offensive line. You mentioned Derek Brown, and uh, Quinn Early has some speed, but it's been a balanced offense, but the running game and protection has given Wade Wilson time. It really has, and it, you know, I, I don't think all this necessarily reflects badly on Bobby Abair, who was the quarterback in New Orleans before Wade Wilson. Bobby Abair now in Atlanta. It's just things chemistry-wise have just clicked in New Orleans. Second down and 10 from the 40, Mikowski 
getting away from the inside pressure can't find a receiver and he does in a uh, underneath pattern to Jesse Hester and a gain of four yards. You saw Michael Irvin uh, relaxing on the sidelines for the Cowboys. He had seven catches for 113 yards. So once again today, he went over the 100-yard mark in receptions and is uh, now in his last 12 games has caught at least five passes. So he's been Mr. Consistency. Third and six coming up for the Colts. 27 to three Cowboys. That's how much time remains in this game. Mikowski drills it and uh, he was going downfield for Langham, and that'll bring up fourth down. Not much decision here. You won't see Stark, the punter. Don is going to take this one and try to get this first down and keep things going. And I think this is an opportunity for Don Mikowski to assert himself, you know, here in Indianapolis, not necessarily as a starter, but possibly as the permanent number two man behind Jeff George. Because face it, Jeff George is the quarterback the Colts want to go with. Uh, I don't think that's the unanimous feelings here in the Indianapolis area. He's not the most popular guy for the words and the things he did during the offseason uh, with these fans and this organization, but uh, he will be the quarterback for the Colts. Fourth down and six. Makowski is going to give it up, and the Colts will get it on the... Well, the Cowboys will take over on the Colt 39. More on George. You know, the fans in the media are not going to determine who's going to be the quarterback of the future of this ball club, and it will be Jeff George, who would have been the starter today if it were not for the bruised hand continuing to bother him on Wednesday. Well, he bruised that thing late in the game last week against Denver. Uh, if not for that, he would have been the starter here today. And uh, He's in a tough situation. His biggest gripe... Uh, is with so much the media and the criticism he's gotten from the media. And if he thinks the Indianapolis media is tough, he should just be thankful every day he goes home and sees something in the paper he doesn't like. He's not in one of the tougher towns media-wise in the United States that would probably cut his heart out and feed it to him <laughs> compared to just criticizing it. Derek Lassick gets some running room up the middle, and that will bring us the two-minute warning as Lassick gets inside the 30-yard line, a gain of nine. And Emmett Smith has time to sign autographs. Big day for Emmett Smith today with full left in hit in this stadium. People forget Dallas basically plays in a dome stadium. Noise will be a big factor next week for the 49ers, too, because Texas Stadium is basically a dome stadium they never got around to finish. You're cruel. Tommy Agee for a couple of yards. This game is presented by authority of the National Football League, and the CBS telecast is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of CBS, the Indianapolis Colts and in the National Football League is prohibited. It'll be a first down at the 24-yard line with 125 remaining. Jason Garrett hands off to Derek Lassick, and Lassick is stopped behind the line of scrimmage by Willie Pegues. We're going to thank some people here and uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, first foray of the Cowboys into Indy Town. Today's game was produced by Mark Wolf and directed by Bob Matina. Our associate director is Lance Barrow. Broadcast associate Mark Dibbs. The senior producer of the NFL on CBS is Ed Gorin and our executive in charge of production is Rick Gentile. I want to thank Dave Corris and Chuck Gardner for their work up here in the booth. Second down and 11 coming up for the Cowboys. And Tommy Agee with a yard. Clancy on the tackle. The Redskins have inflicted the worst loss on the Giants since 1961. 41-7 as the Giants beat the Redskins. They're in last place now, 1-4. And, and that'll do it. So for Emmett Smith... Michael Irvin and Troy Aikman banged up and all a successful day for the Cowboys. Huh? And there's the Dallas executive in charge of production right there, Jimmy <laughs> Johnson, and his team produced every mistake that Indianapolis made. Troy Aikman took advantage, and he had a defense that gave up some yards, but really stifled and just snuffed out the offense of the Indianapolis Colts. Along with Randy Cross, Dick Stockton here at the Hoosier Dome, 27-3 the final score. As the Cowboys now have won their third straight game after dropping their first two and the Colts dropped to two and three.
as they have now lost their last two games. So the final score 27 to 3 five turnovers committed by the Colts today and the Cowboys control the ball in the second half for their victory setting up their big matchup with San Francisco next week at Texas Stadium. So we're going to send you to our New York studios uh, after upcoming commercials to Jim Nance and Terry Bradshaw with scores and highlights coming up after this break. So for Randy Cross, Dick Stockton bidding you adieu from the Hoosier Dome. <laughs>